Hey y'all, welcome to Ask Jen. I am Jen, your host, and today we are on the Uprising Network with a very, very special guest. Um, We are in studio with her, and if you've seen her all over your FYP page, you know she is Miss Mitch, the black teacher from Hogwarts, and my personal favorite, Fit Girl. She has been featured by Netflix, Target, and even on this past year's Emmys. My favorite fellow funny bitch, Miss Mel Mitch. Hey, girl. Hey, y'all. I'm Mel Mitchell. Um, Welcome to Detroit. Yeah, thank you. This is a lovely city. This is my show, so I okay. make the rules. Okay. And I'm telling you about thank to play you. a game. I know you got your own podcast and mm-hmm. your own following, but that's not the ball game we here. your shit. This, this, we can cuss, right? Period. We, we cuss? Oh, definitely we can okay. cuss. Just Everybody play. asking you, because do y'all know me? Fuck the goddamn shit. Yeah, you can cuss. Okay, pussy dick. I was just making sure. <laughs> I would just make because I come places and I be cussing and be like, hey, stop cussing. So before I start cussing, I ask. Or after I cuss the first time, I ask. And then. That's a very Southern bitch thing for you to do because Detroit bitches never just, ask just can cuss. they cuss. They just start cussing. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to play a game. This game is very fun. I made it up just for you. Okay, I'm excited. Because I have very rarely had famous bitches on my show. You're the first famous bitch for real. <laughs> this game is called Sip or Spill. I know you got a lot of interest in DMs. So I'm mm. going to ask you some okay. questions. So. You either spill the tea, and if you don't want to spill, you take a sip of your drink. We have this nice champagne next to us, so. Okay, you know. I like to overshare, so. I'm so excited. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Has a celebrity ever DM'd you and said that they enjoyed your content or thought it was funny? Yes. Okay. Lower, well, not super, super high level. Okay. But, yes. Would Blue they be, like, on TMZ? Blue checks be in there. Mm. But, Mm, not that high. I mean, Don Cheadle publicly was like, this is funny. Don so, Cheadle publicly said, this girl he is like funny. DM. He was like, this is funny publicly. publicly. I ain't had no DM slides for like, no, like, ain't the famous people. It'd be like random blue checks. Okay. Like, I don't even know who you are, but thank you, blue check. Thank you, blue check. I like sure. that. Yeah. Has a large or major company ever sent you a ridiculously low rate for content? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, Fashion Nova never even emailed me back. Oh, they're not fucking with I, you. I told them I need five bands of video, and they were just like, okay, well, fuck you. Fuck and then you. that was just it. Damn, Fashion Nova don't got five bands for a video. Yeah, Broke. Anyway. Yeah. Um, have you ever been cyber stalked or harassed? Yes. What got what brought you some harassment? I mean, I'm a black woman with a mouth on the internet. So there's that, yeah. there's that kind of harassment. Um, I'm making my new harassment is I'm making fun of men, so they're, they've they been on my ass for like you a month You know, men now. don't be playing. They strict around this bitch. They said, uh, we got the patriarchy. You better back the fuck up. So, who was the biggest celebrity who slid in your DMs to try to link up? Um... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna tell her you gonna sit? No, I'm not... I'm, not really like no big celebrities for okay. real. They don't be like, let's hang out. Okay, so you it say not, okay, big. Them, but they're not celebrities though. Okay, like, but it'd be like, like artists, he an like, artist, a comedian, an uh, athlete. I really like. You don't be knowing who they bro, is? Bro, because I, I be scaring the hoes. Like you come to my page like, oh, she look cute. And then I got I'm putting you in a skit. I got a fucking beard filter on. And they're like, bitch, I'm not trying to fuck this hoe. Like, <laughs> she play too much. And that's how I be scaring the hoes. All this game is telling me, Instagram, y'all need to tighten up the blue check fucking status. Because why is... Blue check, nobody is sliding on my girl. Yeah, okay. I'm just trying to find my king. Have time. you ever slid in a celebrity DMs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who? <laughs> Keith Howard. Keith Howard. I've been talking to myself in that nigga DMs for years. Do you know what's so funny? When New Edition Story came out, I uh, think I tweeted Keith Powers on Twitter every single day. I don't give a fuck what he was doing. He honestly, was going to talk to me. I am very ashamed. I've deleted all, every tweet that says Keith in it already, but but I've added some more, so I got to go back and delete them too. But it was bad. Like when the new edition movie came out, I was so excited. I've never I been such a press nothing, patty in my life. I hadn't had nothing to stand for in years. It was like, this is B2K. This is B5 now. I'm like, these are not even the real niggas they was playing, but these is new niggas. And I'm like, how dare BET find this? That's enough. Nigga? They bought so many. I ain't never seen that many new niggas they had, in like, my new life. new niggas that just dropped. Like, I had never not seen them before, but put them all in one room like that. Y'all are tripping. How dare y'all? First of all, I want to just put it out there that I am a very big fan of you. Like, of course, Thank like you. I like you personally, like as a human being because of our relationship and how we met. But I've just always enjoyed your content. 
And when we finally met online, you was just super fun, great energy. So I'm glad that, you know. Thank you. You sitting here with me today. But later on down the line, I found out we connected on a deeper level. Unfortunately, like, we both dealt with the passing of our fathers. Like, I know that's something that we talked about already. I already know your father passed and used comedy to cope. Did you ever think, like, you know, that would turn into a career? Not at all. I never, well, I toyed with it. Like, I joked, but, like, I'm going to be a comedian, LOL. And then in 2016, 17, I had a podcast. I'm going to be very clear. I had a podcast before niggas had podcasts. I was one of the first bitches on the regular street with a fucking podcast in 2016. Say that. Okay, y'all went outside. But I would just be on there saying ridiculous shit. And I always had these funny, like, things in my head to say. And I'm like, oh, my God, that would be such a funny viral tweet. That would probably blow up. But God was like, no, dumbass girl. These are stand-up jokes. Write that shit down. So... I started writing this shit down because my homeboy was like hearing the shit I was saying. And he was like, you need to start writing your stuff down and get on stage for stand up." And I was like, no. And uh, it took me like 2017. I uh, got dumped. Uh, No, I got broken up with in 2017. I was like, okay, I was down bad. I was like, damn. Then I lost my job. And I was just like, okay, God. Okay. How funny do you want me to be? Like, God so damn. it honestly came out of a place of pain and I never saw this for me. I knew it was gonna, I knew I was gonna be famous. I knew it was gonna be something, but I didn't know it was gonna be this. You thought you was gonna be a video hoe, not a funny bitch? I wanted to be a video hoe so bad. I'm so mad I missed that opportunity and now I'm kind of heavy set. So like, I can't really just be in the videos like that. And I also don't want to support a rapper nigga. Like, I, de- I just definitely don't want to support a rapper. I just, that's one of my biggest icks. Like, how dare you want to drop a hot 16 right now? Like, we got bills. Okay. So, also, one thing I know is your dad was a pastor, and a lot of your content is very controversial. How do you think he would feel about it? So, I get my sense of humor from my dad. Like, my dad was an idiot. Like, I (laughs) I act just like my daddy. So, people be, because, like, people be so shy. But, like, if y'all knew my daddy, if you knew my grandmother, oh, my God, his mama was a nutcase. I am a perfect mix of them. And even my, even though my dad was a pastor, we were never like super jean skirt Christian. We were still jean very, skirt Christian is a very specific But you knew brand. what I was talking about. But you knew what I meant. And we were never that Christian. So I could watch anything on TV but Harry You Potter. watch Play a Club? Yeah. That's a good pastor. I mean, I was Literally, I, I watched it. Like I have a joke about my parents made me watch Pimps Up, Holes Down. <laughs> I watched Pimps. I was like eight, bro, watching that with my parents. So there was really no kind of boundaries in what we watched because they wanted us to see, like, this would happen when you disobey your parents. I'm just like, bro, I'm eight. Like, it's a this good was, ass movie, can't this, lie. It, no, it was good as fuck, but it was like a lot. So, like, my parents never shielded me from, like, the fuck shit of the world or just, like, raunchiness or sexual stuff or violence. It just, no witchcraft. That was the only line. No they witchcraft. Had. That's the line. They started casting some spells, had to go, go get and, a, and now you're making Harry Potter. And now, which is so funny. So <laughs> even this, the way I even, I didn't watch Harry Potter until 2020. And it worked out. The only reason I watched Harry Potter is because my mom got her hair done during quarantine. <laughs> and it pissed me off so bad because I'm like, one, you are my only parent. Like, you know, like, when you lose a parent, like your one living parent, I was like, well, I'm your only parent. I don't do so much. Like, no, nah, well, you are my only okay, parent. Okay, it's a daily pandemic. I saw you going to get your hair done. Get your hair done. So, so I'm about I was, to do some fuck shit too. That's literally, I was like, I got something for you. HBO Max. And now you're rich. And now and now it's like, well, did, did you make your witch video? Okay, make it, <laughs> make your witch videos. Hurry Go up. Go make your witch video. Literally. I'm doing, doing, alive. I'm doing all my podcast bro stuff. And she's like, it's funny, but you need the white people. So make sure you go put your witch hat on and make your videos. I'm like, well, well, look who likes witches now. Look who love witchcraft. Come on, I bought you a car with the witch money. So now we like witches. Now we like witches. I literally was about to say, I know he's happy you're blowing up on TikTok. Oh, no, he's hilarious. You have over 8.6 billion likes. That is a crazy amount. What skit do you think put all eyes on you? Oh, Euphoria for sure. That was that was a good one. That was the first. Miss Mitch. Yeah, that was that was. That good. was the first skit I did. It had a million views by the next morning. And I had saw a white girl do it. And I thought it was funny. I'm and so happy we stealing from white people man, now, you baby. Happy from Black people. History steal, Month to me. Steal from them. But, like, I saw it and I thought it was funny. And it was a voice. It's a voice in my head that's been carrying me for the past couple of years. It said, do the black version, bitch. And I was like, okay. So I started, I just wrote, wrote a couple jokes, jokey jokes down. And I got, like, a, like five minutes worth of footage to cut down into, like, a video or two. It had, like, a part two in my back pocket because, you know, TikTok be like, oh. A part two. two. I was like, bitch, I got a part two, two bitch. Already. It's done. I already got it. Get this to a million, bitch, and we can get a part two pop. And did. And did. Um, but that was it. But when I did that Harry Potter shit, that's when shit was like, 
out of here. So that's so funny that you brought that up because that's literally my next question. Even when you switch niches, you went from 90s movie to Harry Potter to Marvel. What about you makes you think that people always want to watch whatever you put out? Um, I don't know. Like, it took it's a while. thick? I mean, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, But me, like, slipping the thick jokes in there or just, like... I think the fact that I have proven that you can be a nerd and still be cool. Because, you know, niggas, oh, I'm a nerd. That's why black girls, like, no, you're an asshole. People just don't like, like, I am cool, but I also like nerd shit. And I think that's what's made my stuff funny. And it's still black as fuck without trying too hard. And it's not like ratchet or ghetto. It's just fucking black. Mm -hmm. And it's very like auntie, which I have a problem with because I don't know how old these people think I am. I think it's like a Southern thing. Like, Southern girls, like, I can't, I like, be Tabitha giving Brown. auntie. People think Tabitha's, like, 86 years yeah. old. She's, like, 42. She like, 42. So, people must think I'm, like, 30, 40. Because it's like, oh, auntie. Not too whoa, much on the 30 whoa, whoa, whoa. now. Come on. Not too much I'm on the 30. 28. I know. <laughs> you said I'm not TT. And I love that for you. However, for I am 28. Me as a young whippersnapper. I as an infant am 28. And I. <laughs> me as a teenager. Auntie was a lot for me. Auntie is a lot. I, I definitely think it's like a Southern thing. Yeah. So as someone who was mainly known for skits, mm -hmm. do you find it hard to transition like internet funny into stand-up comedy? So I started stand-up in that like transitional where like the social media comedians were trying to try out the stage and they a lot of them weren't good at it. And so they had a lack of respect. So I would just be in these spaces hearing the comedians who've been doing this shit for 20, 30 years talk shit about the Instagram comedians coming on stage, selling that bitch out, but doing five minutes of piss poor yikes material. And now they've grown since then, obviously, because the OG stepped in helping. But you open it up for somebody who's like, oh, I guess I'll do stand up because I have a million and four followers and decided to do stand up. Like, it was crazy. So I'm like, I need to get good at this stand up shit. So the stand up shit has made me good at the skit shit. And the skit nice. shit has made me even better at the stand up shit. So it's really like helping me do both. Um, but I always, and that's how I even got on this tour that I'm on now, <laughs> is because in between my skits, I would post, here's some stand up. I'm a funny bitch too. Hold on, I'm on stage. Hold do you on, remember I when did... we did that open night mic at Yes, um, I made it. I'm like, bitch, you're funny. The same way my homeboy Ronnie hit me, I said, bitch, you're funny. Write that shit down, get on stage. Because it's a crazy skill to have. And you already have, like, the foundations of them. Like, you're funny. You need to be telling jokes on stage. Not you coming on here telling me to. All right. And it's funny, in it? So, like, even <laughs> I would do my shit. She said, go get that money. And I would post my stand-up. And then I saw Kev on stage because he's very, like, in the streets. He knows what's going on on the internet. So, mm -hmm. I, like, he followed me. And I was like, hey, hey. what's up? I do stand-up. I would love to do Keep Your Distance Comedy. So Keeper Distance Comedy is his comedy show, show that is in LA mm -hmm. and I really wanted to do it. I wanted to do the first ones in 2020. I sent an email and they never emailed me back. And I know they saw it because it got three views on YouTube and it wasn't me. <laughs> so I sent them an unlisted link and they never hit me back. I was like, and it was a very terrible clip, but I they said to send something clean. So I was like, fuck, that's all I got to clean this iPhone video, whatever. I, they told me to do it. And you know, when people send you stuff for opportunities, you would feel like a loser if you don't do it. Yeah. So I was like, let me just go on and do it. So I DM'd him, like, hey, I have a new tape. Like, I had a really, really good tape that I just did. And I sent him to that, and he emailed me back and was like, this, because I DM'd him, he was like, oh, you're funny, here, send it here. We can do the June show. I sent him my tape. He was like, this is great. My wife is laughing. Oh, wonderful. What's your information, blah, blah, blah. Come June, I was on a flight. But the devil made, okay, it was my I remember fault. That, wasn't that trip, like, super chaotic? It was so chaotic, and it, Initially, it was my fault, but everything else, else that happened after okay, that was girl. the devil. Because I did stop at Chick-fil-A. Okay. I did. But I was like, it's good. I got pre-checked. I travel all the time because I be coming to Detroit all the time. So I have... I, right, I, you I, be coming to Detroit all the time. This was just your first time, but now you come all the time. Bet. <laughs> Why are you bringing up old shit? <laughs> anyway, so... Because I got pre-checked, I do this airport shit often. So I already know how this work. I'm just walking in, blah, blah, blah. I'll park, whatever. I got Chick-fil-A. I walk in. You know, you walk in class late. I was cool. But they booked my ticket and didn't put the pre-check on my ticket. Fuck. And I was like, oh, God. And I was late. I was pushing it. My flight was at like noon. And I got there at like 11.15. I think I'm cool. They were like, oh, well, it's too close. I hate that. We can't check your bag. I said, sir, if you don't check this fucking bag, I'm going to die right here. So so they finally checked my bag. I'm like, whoo, okay, let me mosey on over to pre-check. They were like, ma'am, you don't have pre-check. I said, fuck you mean. I paid I've for I've been it. had pre-check. Like, I've been, I pre-check every day. He's like, well, it's not on your ticket. So I you miss pre-check. So I go mean? back in line trying to get them to put pre-check on my ticket. Didn't work. So I had to go through the regular peasant clear line with all everybody, cousin, and auntie. You know the clear line goes so fucking slow by itself. That's true. I literally had on some Birkenstocks and a Gymshark set 
I'm running full speed through the airport. And you know the Atlanta airport got them like moving walks and they shit sure and to get to each. I think Hate I was that airport. Beat. And in my brain, you know, when you frantic, you don't be making sense. And like the train was taking a minute to come. I was like, bro, I could just run faster to get there. And this was before you was in the gym. <laughs> So I'm running full speed in Birkenstocks through the airport, looking stupid as hell, trying to drag my suitcase and neck pillow. It's giving Jim Shark ad. So then I triggered my asthma. I was on an asthma attack, and the asthma triggered my allergy. So now my nose is running profusely in my mask. It's like dripping down in my mouth. And I get to the gate, the door is closed, and it's like a gate, a white, a black lady gate agent. I'm just like, ma'am, please, I have to get to LA. It's the biggest opportunity of my life. And she's like, ma'am, the door's closed. I'm sorry. What's happening, sister? I That's literally how you white came lady. Out. You gonna let another <laughs> black team? I slave crowed and slid down the wall because they was not letting me on that plane. She was like, ma'am, you have to calm down. Like she was just looking at me like, bitch, get it together. And that's why I hate that as black women. <laughs> It's an, always a hating ass older black woman somewhere to just ruin your day. And I was just like, man, hey, you need to get real black. Oh my God. So she put me on a two o'clock. She put me on a two o'clock. Okay. So I go, I'm so defeated. My my wig was plastered on my face like this. That's low-key probably why the wig looked kind of crazy in my keep a distance set because it was just like, I had fucked it up the day before, so I didn't even know how to redo it, how it was laid, how the girl did it. So oh I was just God. trying, like, not hardest. Anyway. So I get on the two o'clock flight. And they put me on standby. I was like, I don't trust standby. I'm on the phone with my mom and she was like, well, baby, you might just buy that ticket straight out. $600. But the influence of money I had, I have money. And I live at home, so I don't have no bills. So I really just saved all my influence and money. So I had enough money to pay for it. Thank God he provided. Amen. Amen. But I was like, $600 for a one-way ticket. And it was I couldn't be excited about things that were happening because, like, Brent Fias was coming off the plane. I couldn't be like, Brent. I was just like, even this so I'm Brent, in the worst day of my life. I'm, I'm, my wig wet. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, I'm distraught. I'm fucking distraught. I couldn't even be excited about Brent coming off the plane. Man, fuck Brent right now. I'm just trying to get to LA. <laughs> then, I was so sad. I go get some medicine. My cycle was on, so I was just... The cycle, the sinuses, and the asthma. <laughs> my bitch was having the spring. worst day of her life. I was having life. the worst day of my life. So then I, I go to the gay agent. He was the only one being nice to me the whole day because everybody was like being an asshole. Fuck you. And then he was, a, he was a Sigma. And I was just like, I hate Sigmas. And you are the light of my day. And I'm just like, God God got something for me. That was that was God saying, see? Shout out to the Sigmas. Shout out to Sigmas. That was, I was like, I ain't going to talk bad about Sigmas for like two weeks about this. So I finally get on the plane. Now I'm blowing my nose profusely in COVID. And it's just like, people think I got COVID. It's so I'm like, blowing bitch. it. And not because I'm on a cycle, it just keep on making my cycle work. <laughs> and then the plane gets delayed, bitch, while we on it. We on, I watched two, three movies because we it was raining. I'm sorry. The plane is taxiing, and it wouldn't let them take off. We taxied so long, they ran out of enough gas for us to be legally allowed to fly to California. So we had to go pull back. Ooh, shit. Pull back in. Get gas. That took three, four hours. We didn't leave till like five o'clock. You was lying like shit. And what time was your set? It was luckily it was the next day. Oh my God, thank but you. But I'm freaking the fuck out because I'm like, if I don't get to Los Angeles today, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm sitting on this plane in this gym shark set, bleeding through my clothes. Cause I couldn't even like go to the bathroom for real because it was just, it's a plane. Hey. Like I couldn't even y'all know how it is. Like, like it, 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 it was too much. It's not even I'm like just a nasty bitch. It was just like I finally get to LA. Had to reunite with my luggage because it was on another. It been there. My luggage was like, "Where is this bitch at?" <laughs> luggage is sitting there, and they had a driver for me. They found I got there. I was like, "God is I'm so gonna good. stomp a mud hole in this goddamn stage tomorrow." So that's what I did, bitch. And that, and he said, and even the people said it's one of the best sets they've seen to keep your distance. Wow. But the devil didn't want me to get there, and because of that, he asked me to be on tour with him. I don't know. That was like a 10 minute story. I don't give a fuck. I loved it. So that's what happened. The and d- now I'm on tour. How do you think and people I quit my job? Period. period. We love a bitch who quit her job. Release your job. Release your job. How do you think people react to your online sets versus in person sets? Sets as in skits? Yeah. It's so different. Mm-hmm. I had to pivot the way that I did for my skits because. All my like comedy shit and like podcast shit kept on getting flagged for cussing. So people come, the people who do come specifically to see me, like some, I tell a joke about my skits, like, oh, that is you. But it's like, this ain't not, nah, this ain't Miss Mitch. Now okay. we're talking about some dick up here. We having a good time. <laughs> and it's funny because this is Kev on stage, who's a very safe yes. audience. I am a church bitch. Like, I grew up in the church. 
But we talking about dick. But we talking about dick as well. So I got to ease them in like, hey, church. Hey, man, Jesus, we cussing a little bit. City girl, hey, dick. So I ease them into it. It's always an auntie right in the front. Looking at you like, bitch. So disgusted. And I got a joke about uncircumcised dick. It's my favorite joke to tell. It is. And the the gasps <laughs> that cascade across the audience. I mean, it just brings me so much joy. Because you don't come to a Kevin on stage show for that. And that's what makes it so good. And that's why he loves it. He's like, it's it's beautiful. He I lets me it. he lets me come up there and just talk it. about dick pussy ass. And it's perfect. And it's not that. And it's honestly, like, people call me, like, a raunchy comic. And it's, it the content is raunchy. But I don't come up there and then he put it in. He's in squirting and falling. I, that's not what my content is. Like, I just, okay, yes, I am talking about uncircumcised dick. But I'm not talking about, like, fuck. I'm just like, you know, uncircumcised dick exists. It's out here. This happened. And here's a description of such. And it's funny to me. And it's like an obs- it's observational. More it's not more, It's not about the the fucking person. I don't say, because then I bend over and then he slapped it. I don't. That's not my style. It's more like an observational, <gasps> oh funny. Oh, my gosh. Did she just say that? Kind of comedy. Because like even that. just, you don't see no really young young bitches doing comedy like that. That's and true. you never know what to expect from me. And that's what I enjoy about it. You're very good at it. I've seen Thank a you. few of your sets live. You was a funny bitch. Thank you, man. So you here with me now, but you're going to be back in Detroit in May. Yes. For Kevin on Stage Tour. So my question is. They are will you the, sell out. Please go. They're going to sell out. Are you the only woman on the tour? Yeah. Okay. That's it's three of us. It's just me, him, and T- here. I'm the host. And the opener. You the host and the opener. Sure. So, of course, in comedy, there's a lot of misogyny and oh, yeah. sexism in the jokes. Like, how do you combat it or embrace it? Um, I don't come around. Like, in Atlanta, them niggas do not see me. Like, I don't do no open mics no more. You not fit. Oh, can I? No. Because niggas is weird, bro. And especially being like, they can take the female comedians who have more of like a... a you about gift. to offend somebody? Probably. Like, more of, like, a gimmicky, more auntie, more mammy kind of thing. Freaky ass auntie joke. Freaky auntie, freaky auntie trope. They love that. They can do that because she gonna entertain you. you right. She gonna... I'm, I'm not a hot doing bitch. That you shit. cannot fuck me. <laughs> Period. You you will not bring your ghetto into my I'm daughter. a hot girl. Can't try to stay home, honey. And I'm actually funny. And it's like, now, first, I wasn't that funny. I'm, so I'm, I'm a tour bitch with, with Kevin on stage. And I need to be entertaining you local ass niggas. And so, just like, I give them nothing. Like, you not even gonna be at it. Like... They, Cause they get weird. And it's like men are weird in general, but men in comedy, it's like it's obviously a boys' club. And then you have like the pick me's in comedy who like, yeah, I want this crusty nigga. Like, man, I don't want him. You, <laughs> why are you being weird to me? I don't want these niggas. So it's just a lot of weirdness to combat. And it's like, and then it's like a, a politics to it. Oh, that'll do it. And that gets really weird. What are what's some advice you can give to a woman who's trying to get into comedy? Um, keep writing. Just find your voice, honestly, and like what your brand of comedy is. Because Ian, I feel like I just found mine within the last year or two. Even with this, like even with the the skits and the tour, or whatever, I'm still trying to find my comedy. I talk about myself because it's it's easier, and I'm never running out of jokes. Like even the worst things in my life, I find jokes in it. Like my funniest jokes about like my breakup or my funniest jokes about my dad dying because it's and can't nobody take that from me because it's my shit. Right. Um, so write about your life and can't that something that can't nobody else write about. I love that. Yeah. That's good advice. Thank you. So you recently did a set for one of your favorite artists. Yes. Ari Lennox to love launch her. her newest album. So what was that like? Who bitch. Um, that was very hard. That was the hardest I had, um, just broken up with my boyfriend two days before then. Literally still drinking bleach from a silly straw as the show and I had to pull myself together to do the show. And it was like such a big opportunity. I was just like, I am not mentally well right now. And I got to do this. And I had wrote some breakup jokes, like literally in the midst of me. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> it's going to be hit on stage, bro. <laughs> ah, this is hilarious. And so it was so crazy how that happened because I he had hit me up to do the tour and he's like, oh, I also have a show with Ari Lennox. You want to do that? I'm like, hell yeah. But I was like, damn, I got to do 15 minutes. And then I already did Keep Your Distance and that. Like in comedy, once you kind of post your jokes or they get like- You can't do them again. You can't really do the jokes. And I'm like, damn, I need all new jokes. What am I going to talk about? Then the breakup happened. I'm like, oh, we have- Baby, I got material. I got, I had like five minutes of breakup shit two days after my breakup. And that's probably some of the funniest shit I ever wrote. Okay, I have a joke about Ari Lennox. Mm -hmm. And because I had to bleep it. On Instagram, because it would have flagged my shit. Yeah. But it was funny that I connected with her, because I'm, oh my God, Ari, I'm so excited to see you. Like, 
and have such a great moment. Like you were forever indebted to you. She's like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. I'm like, because Shea Butter Baby was playing when I got my ass ate for the first time in 2018. And everybody just bust the fuck out laughing. And I've been wanting to tell her that for years. And I got the perfect opportunity because it really was playing when I got my ass ate for the first time. And so that was funny. So we really was like here. And that's how my breakup jokes, which was like, and she was like, oh my God, sis, are you okay? Like, you know, I already talked, like, from the audience, because her album was like a breakup yeah. album. Yeah. To the point where I cannot even listen to the album anymore in full, yeah. because it came out in, like, when you going through some shit, and that's your, Baby, your music. I can't listen to Four by Beyonce at all. Like, I can't listen to the whole album no more. I, I listen to Boy By. And, and the rest of the album, I can't, because I'm going to go back to that place. So it was just beautiful to, like, connect with my favorite R&B artist like that. When her album came out, I loved the album when it came out. It was just, like, a great full circle moment for me. I love that. Yes. So I love ASL because it was a cute album because it really highlighted, like, growing up on the internet, like, all the skits mm-hmm. and things like that. What made you feel comfortable enough to start putting your content online? I have been like an internet Forrest Gump low key. I've been a, that bitch on the internet for a long time. Period. You better say that. And like different eras. Like I blew up on the internet the first time in 2009. I was a big jerking fan. Oh, you you was used to be on YouTube jerking. I was nah. I was not doing the jerking. Okay. I didn't have that kind of courage, but I would take the Go Go Power Rangers. Remember them? I would take their videos and then I would make individual videos for each nigga. And I was that bitch. Everybody had to come through me for the Rangers, bitch. This is on so YouTube crazy. In Brian's girl, ninety four, <laughs> like beef five Brian. So yeah, because my internet for his government goes even before then. I'm Brian's girl, ninety four. Google me, bitch, because I was on the message boards heavy. I was on the beef five message boards too. You probably read some of my stories. I bitch. probably did. You started was, fan fiction. Yes. Oh, you was a real loser. Fan fiction. Oh, for real. <laughs> no, I was. No, fan fiction is the foundation of my internet. I've met B5 so many times. Like, will, uh, so many times. I will show you a picture of me and B5 <laughs> right now. Several. <laughs> bitch. So, my internet, I didn't have a lot of supervision at home, but my parents wouldn't let me go nowhere. I couldn't have a MySpace or a Facebook, so I had to get creative on the internet with shit to do because I didn't have shit else to do. And I got that computer and the internet, but I can't go on MySpace. If I did go on MySpace, my sister would have snitched on me. So I was like, I can't even sneak on MySpace. I would play The Sims. Still play The Sims. Still play The Sims. But I discovered, I would just go, I was so boy crazy. I found a hard drive with my old desktop on it. I just would save pictures of niggas. (laughs) I would go and just save them. It was ridiculous. That's why you like lesson niggas? Yes, I would go to the Chris (laughs) Brown. It started with Will Smith and Fresh Prince, really. I was like three. But it's, I have not been unleashed from light-skinned niggas since, literally. But I would go to the Chris Brown World website. Uh-huh. Oh, that had such good pictures. And it had the look-alike section. And half the niggas didn't really like Chris Brown, but it was all like It was hoes. And it was just like, yes, I would save these niggas' pictures for what? I, I wasn't touching myself or nothing. I would just save them. I just fine, had, fine, I didn't have the hard drive space to just save pictures of niggas. Then I would, when I get home from school, I would check the blogs of Media Takeout, Young Black and Fabulous, Con- Crunk and Disorderly, Concrete Loop. Okay, get my tea. We is then, the same bitch. And then I would go to the fan sites. I would go to Young Love for Chris Brown, and then I would go to B5 online or whatever the fuck the B5 site was. And then it was like, oh, join the message boards. I was like, what's the forum? I don't even know what that is. So I made it. I was like, fine, fuck it. Brian's Girl 94, period, because bitches know me as. Okay. That was my name in the streets. And I discovered fan fiction. I said, bitch, these bitches is on here right I used to be on MSN watching, um, I mean, reading B2K fan fiction. So this is the thing about listen B- B5 um, message board. The reason why I loved it is them girls used to put me on so much music. Those girls on that message board is the reason why I found out who Drake was. Like, they used to post about the Drake girls who lived in Canada. The girls who lived in That's Canada used to post Drake about too. him so because much. Because all of the fan sites had like a fan site network and you can go to other ones. I'm like, that's a boy from Degrassi. I said, that's a boy from Degrassi. Why he got fans? And I'm like, I said, bitch, wait a... Because I'm like, oh, he got a song with Trey Songz? Ladies, make some noise if you want to be my replacement. And now, and now we here. Do, 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 do. So then I started writing fan fiction. So me and my, my friend from school write fan fiction. Like, we would like tag team. Like, bitch, I wrote a chapter. You write a chapter. chapter. That's how me chapter. and my best friend was. Wow. I can't wait for her to watch this. This is, see, and this is how the internet was born. And then I got on YouTube because... I started finding niggas on YouTube, and this is how I found the jerking niggas. So, again, I did Yo, not have my internet journey started because you was looking for hoes. I was looking for hoes, bro. Love and I it. was bored. So, I was trying to find niggas. And this is when I didn't have MySpace. So, bitches on MySpace with me on YouTube would take, like, 
Justin Combs picture, like all the like young Hollywood like celebrity sons and shit, niggas, yeah. They would make like slideshows. I'm like, these niggas is fine. So then I got like this rabbit hole of young Hollywood. So it'd be like Taquan Richmond, who played like Drew and everybody yes. hates Chris, boom, him. And he was best friends with Paige Her. Yep. And I'm like, oh, okay, Paige Her. Then Scott Towns, and that's how I found Scott Towns. Just and, and I'm just like, these are all my bitches. We friends in my head. <laughs> and then Paige had a picture with a boy named Julian. A video with the boy named Julian. Like, who the fuck is Julian? He had like an Elmo hat. I'm like, who is this nigga? So I follow him. And I'm like, these niggas in LA in high school jerking. This is a new dance. And I'm like, okay, these niggas is cute. They got, I Them always like the cute. little skater boys. I'm like, okay, they got on bands and skinny jeans and shit. And I they like had this. The rest is history, bitch. Look up Brian's Girl 94. <laughs> I got the most Netflix. views out of all the fans. I had started a fan site, bitch. A, a, a f- internet queen. And that was my first time going viral in 2009. Thank you for your... Um, my contribution. Your to contribution to online culture. But we know, That's like, online is a place where, like, people can be, like, really yes. mean. Yes. Um, has any mean comments ever made you want to stop? Stop? No, but hesitant. Like, I almost didn't start doing these making fun of nigga videos. Like, because niggas... Because you know what? You make fun of niggas. Woo! The drama that's gonna come your way. Man, like these niggas don't stop. Cause I said something about Drake like three years ago. <gasps> and his stands found my booking email in my bio and signed me up for like hundreds of, of newsletters. I'm still unsubscribing to this day. I don't know how them niggas did that shit. That shit was d- devious. Like, call me a bitch, bro. Like, please. Like, say that's what your daddy did. But don't you sign me up for no goddamn <laughs> newsletters, bro. That shit is devious as fuck. It's so devious. They so fucking mean on the internet, bro. Like, one time, honestly, something that a nigga said to me on the internet has, been, has stuck with me for, like, four years Please now, tell me. Still, four like, years is a long it. time. Because, like, somebody said something, I said something back to him. Because, you know, somebody say some dumb shit to get quoted, and you just say some mean shit. Yeah, because, like, fuck you. Why, why would you, you put this in front of the whole class? And I said something about him being bald and short, and he was like, shut your gummy ass up. Oh, because I, I got, didn't. I, I didn't, didn't even know I had gums. gums like that. And I was like, I'm gummy? It's giving gums? So now when I smile, I'm like, oh my God, I am gummy. Like, oh my God, I'm gummy. So now I'm so conscious about my smile because some nigga on the internet who was like five one ago. with no hairline called me gummy. And now I'd be like, he one up your dumb ass. Damn, I'm mad as hell. He ate me up. And I didn't even know. I'd be like, mom, I'm gummy. Mom, am I gummy? Because like my mom be like, I'm gummy. I'm like, oh my God, you gummy too. We both gummy. And I had to like, really think, <laughs> to really think about it. But it's not that I'm gummy. When I smile, my top lip disappears, mm. and my lip would normally cover my gums, but That's now like I got hella gums because my lip gone look. Yeah, I'm a big lip bitch. That don't happen to me. But I got big lips too, but it just it be leaving. <laughs> Where do we go? <laughs> After you just did, I say, yeah, bitch, that lip gone. <laughs> Like my picture of Morris Chestnut, my lip is gone, bro. Oh, bitch, I don't give a fuck. That's a picture with Morris Chestnut. My, my do pussy it? lip could be gone. I don't give a fuck. I don't believe in black girls getting lip filler, but I heard filler can help with your lip disappearance. So I may have to go up there again. You got influencer money. You supposed to have lip filler. Low key, it's in the it's in the Honestly, contract. Honestly, I have no work done, but lame ass bitch. Like I haven't decided what I want yet. All right. I hope you decide. Because I feel like my BBL later. gonna get a loose a little bit. Like, you definitely don't need to come BBL. I don't need a BBL. I may like lift it up a little bit because it is long. Your booty long? It's long. You think so? It's I know it's long. <laughs> it's been long, long. It's been long for like 40 pounds ago. Like it's not even a weight thing. That's just how I'm built, bitch. Like my booty long. You think they're gonna shorten the booty? What they gonna do? They can lift add it a up cup. a little bit. Yeah, like, that's I, true. My booty start like right here. Mm, okay. Like literally my butt crack high as fuck. Facts. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> you seen it? <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. I think your butt look real good. Thank you, friend. So a career is not the only thing you found online. You found love too. Can you please? Oh, Tell the story of how you decided to shoot your shot on the World Wide Web, internet ass bitch, as you done told us. Y'all are not letting me be single. Be single. When you found love on the internet, what was that like? Because that was a bold shot that that man was was having shots coming from everywhere, but your shit went in. But bitch is not strategic. They not. They not. That's the problem. Because I knew. I'm like, okay, this nigga went viral for being fine. And he he got me too. I was, Light skin, I you was know. Just it's, that's your, that's your bag. I was just playing. So I just said some ooh whatever. He replied. I was like, bet. He replied to me, bet. He replied, which is half the battle because I be shooting the niggas all the time because I can just do that because I'm funny. Okay. And I'm cute enough. You ain't gonna be like, oh, this ugly ass bitch. Uh, I'm ugly cute. ass funny bitch. Like no. I gotta fight through like fat phobia and colorism half the time, but I'm at least not ugly. Period. Period. And not you look good. So bro. I um uh, had. I had shot and I, it was funny and I just like monitor his tweets a little bit because I learned my lesson with shooting at Twitter niggas because you like want to give them coochie then he's like yeah because fuck these black bitches it's like ooh never mind so I waited 
I knew all the hoes are going to be in your DM today because you went viral today. I'm going to wait a little bit, monitor his tweets to see if he was a dumbass. He wasn't. Okay. So that was like July when he went viral. I waited till August. August. She said, I waited a whole 30 we a, days. We had a little banter here and there, a couple laughing emojis. He was, and he laughed at something else. I said, speaking of. Bitch, let me laugh you out about, them drawers. Oh, my homework girl has said something about like her boss said, get off my phone. And he laughed at me laughing. And I, I oh, you just laughing at a bitch laughing. Oh, you you about to with the kid. Some coochie, bro. And I knew it. So I was just like, well, speaking of phones. This mine. Oh, I you a that, sweet that bitch. When the dude was like this, I was like speaking the phones, and he was like, phones like numbers, like the 10-digit count. I was like, hell yeah, nigga. <laughs> and he gave me the number. And I talked to that nigga like, give or take, every day since. <laughs> okay, um, how did that situation work for you? You know, shooting the shot online like you thought. That was fun. It was, it was fun. fun. It was a good time. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> do you have any tips for making a long-distance relationship work? No. Okay. <laughs> Bitch, I don't either. My, I can't see you. You can't be with me. Thank you so much, Mel. You're welcome. Um, do you like or enjoy Detroit? Do you think Detroit I, is cool? I actually really like Detroit. You do? I, ain't gonna, I like I like. Not Detroit. a lot of people come here to visit. If somebody was thinking about visiting Detroit, what would you tell them? I don't know. All right, bitch, bitch, find something to say. No, I'm trying to find, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, I know why I'm here. Yeah. But. <laughs> Never move. <moving>. Next question. <laughs> but, like, I know why I be here. But if you don't have no reason to be here like that, like, unless it's the It's event, dick here. Come to Detroit and find here. you some dick. It's dick and scammers, and that's honestly enough. I feel like that's enough. That's enough. And they be, yeah, come on. Money. Come on down. It is niggas with money here. And it's like drug dealing capital, right? Y'all got a whole. That's this is, this, is your theme, this your theme to get people to come to Detroit is fine mm-hmm. niggas and dick and drug dealers and scammers. I, mean, I know that's right. So this is X Gen. I usually give advice to my audience, mm-hmm. but you play a lot of different characters. Yeah. I'm going to read you a question and you're going to have to answer it as one of the characters that you pick. So give me, I'm going to give you a number one through four. Pick one of those numbers. Three. Three. So you're going to have to answer this question as the host of Hoes Not Human podcast. I was hoping you would say that. Wonderful. Bitches be what well aligned. So this is the question, okay? Are you ready to answer? Yeah. Dear host of Hoes Not Human podcast. Are we talking a bucket hat or Quan Dietrich? Oh, we talking to Quan Dietrich. Okay, Quan Dietrich. Okay. I have a male best friend. We have been close since undergrad over five years ago and even moved to the same city after college. We've never had a fight until he got a new girlfriend. He is always making excuses not to hang out with me and canceling our time together. Recently, he told me he plans to propose. I don't want to sound like a hater, but I don't want him to marry her because she caused a rift in our relationship. Should I say something? Ruin our relationship? What should I do? Find a guest. <clears throat> Your problem is you a hoe. Because what you should have did was fucked him years ago as he deserves as a man and you wouldn't have to worry about him being with this new bitch anyway. That's your problem. Fuck him now so you can get his coochie that he deserves and he can marry his queen because you play too fucking much. Thank you, Quan Dietrich. (laughs) Quan Dietrich. I'm sorry, Quan Dietrich. Thank you so much. You're welcome. (laughs) Oh my god! <laughs> Dang, I should have put the Snapchat filter on. Oh my god! <laughs> Use a funny ass bitch. Thank you. You done told us all our business, all your business. You are so as inspiring. As, could, as much as you could. I wish I had some better questions. You break this glass. You seem like you're ready to spill. So. <laughs> This is Motivational Minute with Mel. Mm -hmm. Mel, there are hundreds of people who watch this YouTube channel. I'm going to list three topics. Can you give some words to motivate the people? Yeah, go ahead. All right. The person who is grieving the loss of someone they love. Mm, That's deep. Um, It takes time. It takes time. Understand who that person was and how they would want you to grieve them and do that. I am an idiot about the way my father passed or that my father passed because he was a funny person and he would want us to be happy and not be happy that he's gone, but like he would want us to, you know, enjoy his memory and make light of it because he wasn't like no sad person. Like we both cancers and we get sad. 
but we also want everyone to have a good time. So understand who that person was and mourn them accordingly and just let time just, just it's going to take time and it's never gets all the way better, but it's a day by day kind of thing. The person who is scared to shoot their shot at somebody on their timeline. Well, um, time again, time, time. time. You just just wait, just wait a minute and and scope it out. You fully. said, "Bitch, don't be too thirsty." Now, don't be too thirsty. You gotta, you just gotta see how it's gonna play out. Cause you can't just be hollering. Does he have a bitch? If he has a bitch, is he still looking for other bitches? And do he live with the bitch? Do he live with the bitch? Are, are there children involved? Do your research lurk first and see if, do y'all align with y'all, you know, morals and values? Okay. Dude. And is it, is it a plausible shot? Okay, I'm fucking be hot. serious. My booty is very big and I'm funny. So I can really get do any the, nigga. I can get any nigga I want, honestly. Like, I can't. So I can do shit like that. Y'all can't do what I do. Bitch, know y'all stay in your lane for sure. You really got to stay in your lane. If your booty not big, why are you DMing men on the timeline? Could be, Cause be honest, they're going to go in that media and be like, and absolutely they gonna see you not. And they're going to see you not no booty and they're going to be like, bitch, stop playing with me. So <laughs> measure your booty before you start DMing people. You know? See if you got some shit. <laughs> or titties. If you have titties, then. I def- I, the titties in the, in the profile picture, slam dunk. Slam fucking dunk. As I have my whole titties out on this episode. The person who faces mean comments from people online. Block, block, blockity, blick, blockity. Block. I have 16,000 people blocked. <laughs> One of y'all might be blocked in here. Okay, I know. who knows? I got everybody blocked. So, and I just be preemptively blocking. If somebody say fat hoes ain't shit. You're everybody, blocked. Everybody who liked it getting blocked. Everybody who laughed getting blocked. I blocked everybody. So you, in case you come around my porch, you can't. So people are like, why did that why the male bitch got me blocked? I don't know, no. honestly. But I trust my judgment at the time anything. when I blocked you, bitch. Thank you so much, Mel, for coming on. Yeah, if you me. enjoy Mel, the second leg of her Kim on stage tour will be here in Detroit. The May. weekend of May 5th. So be here and make sure you follow my girl on all her socials. It's Mel Mitch. It's Mel Mitch on Instagram. Everything else is the baddest Mitch. The baddest Mitch. Who's bad? It's a hairstylist who has the baddest Mitch and they won't let me have it. They had it for years, but I really want it and they won't let me. And then it's a white girl with It's Mel Mitch on Twitter who won't let me have it. So wow. I just have to have. Everybody's shit. a hater. They just hate so bad on me and I just don't understand. <laughs> I understand. You funny and your booty big and, and everybody her. loves That's you. That's the name of my biopic. I love you so much. Thank you for coming on. Thank, Thank you all for I'm watching. Hot. Like, subscribe, leave comments. Let me know what you want to see. Yeah. That is all we got for, for Ask Jen tonight. Bye, y'all.